She tried to give me what? Oh, honey, girl, I need he and I need no. With she tried to give me what? Oh, honey, girl, I need he and I need no. With she tried to give me what? Oh, honey, girl, I need he and I need no. With she tried to give me what? Oh, honey, girl, I need oh, honey, girl, I need oh, honey, girl, I need he and I need no. With she tried to give me what? Oh, honey, girl, I need. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Jim Pepperfest 2020 Medicine Song. My name is Jen Michael Looking Wolf, and I'm honored to be one of the musicians this year for the festival. The Jim Pepper Music Festival and all of its programs have been such a great blessing to the Northwest and to the Portland area. Every year, honoring the legacy of a great, renowned Native American musician and incorporating our communities. So we'd like to welcome you for some wonderful music. And we would like to send you a blessing to be safe and healthy and take good care during this pandemic. So this remote concert goes out to you from Portland, Oregon. But first, let's welcome the medicine to the land. I am also Saniam Kalapuya. And while I do not speak for my tribe, I carry my tribe with me wherever I go. So I would like to just offer a brief invocation for the festival this year. So Halitai Ishtima, Ishtima, we thank you so much. Hayumasi for this beautiful land. Hayumasi for the people. We ask that you bless this festival this year and all of the efforts and that they go in a good way and that the medicine is shared in a good way. We thank you for this land, this Ilik. We thank you for all of our relations, our Tilikum. We ask that they all come together in peace and harmony and that they are taken care of during this pandemic. The big sick is upon us, Creator. We just ask for your help. Keep our children safe. Keep our elders safe. Keep our hearts together. Aho.
James of Edmund Greeley of Hopi, Warren Springs, Nez Perce, Warren Springs, Glasgow. And again, I'm happy to be here for the Jim Pepper Native Arts Festival. There we go, there's Jim Pepper right there to my left and my right. Looks like he's a happy guy there with uh, being taught in Creek. Creek. And um, so Jim Pepper Virtual Show 2020 is the way we have to do things now with the COVID pandemic, you know, F COVID, and uh, hope we all make it, you know, to live a full life, um, stay alive. And so I'm here again to uh, share some of my Native American flute music. Um, invitation by Sean Cruz. Uh, he's holding the camera. He's got another camera there going. I got my Native American music board sitting there for best Christian recording from 2017. I got my smudge going um, with my abalone shell, and you know I was got to tell people that I'm an impromptu performer. Um, I have two CDs that I put out, Honoring the Supernatural, back in '06. I had a, a DVD that accompanied it, which was two hours, and you can also f find that on uh, YouTube, Honoring the Supernatural, 2006-2008. And also another CD, um, Before America, and that was the one that won the uh, Native American Music Award for 2017 for Best Trish Recording, um, but other than that, also an impromptu performer. So again, we're here um, next to I-84, uh, here at Sean Cruz's place, and also the former resident of uh, Jim Pepper. Um, this is his home, so, you know, it's an honor, privilege, and a blessing to uh, be here to share some music here for uh uh, one of our uh, artists, Native American artist, and again he wasn't in the film, the, the the documentary Rumble. He was missing from that documentary. So whoever whoever did that, uh, uh, I catch up to him and kick you where it counts.
Hello, students. My name is Celeste. My English name is Celeste White Wolf. On my mother's side, I'm Cayuse Nespers um, in Yakima, actually. On my father's side, I'm Hawaiian, um, Greek, Italian, Swiss, Karuk, Pit River, Kialop, and did I say Hawaiian as well? So uh, I have a very varied uh, background. Uh, my Indian name is Pakatalekatsa. That means five spirits going towards the mountain. I'm a descendant of the old Joseph band of Nespers. Uh, we were the people that were chased out of the Wallawa Valley over in Eastern Oregon. The lady I'm named after Pakatalekatsa and her son White Wolf were captured at Bear Paw almost uh, to Canada. And they, uh, were for prisoners of war down in Kansas and Oklahoma for about four years before they were able to come back to the Northwest. They chose to settle at the Umatilla Reservation in a section called Thorn Hollow, where the uh, the refugees came uh, as we as we returned from um, Oklahoma and Kansas. I did not start weaving until about seven years ago. Um, I retired at that point. I had been doing cancer work before that, uh, legal work before that, business, Indian business kind of uh, projects before that. But about seven years ago, I retired and declared that I wanted to become a weaver. I had never woven in my life before that. And for some reason, I had the, driv the drive to do that. And as I've come to know my Kuluk family from uh, Northern California, from Happy Camp, I've come to find out that my great grandma and great grandmothers from there are all weavers. They come from what's called, the Greek name is Ephmanos, but their name down there, if they made it be English, and they're called uh, Ephmans. So when I went down to, to see my folks, my family down there, I learned that that's where I have this drive to become a weaver. And I absolutely loved it. Since I did not grow up weaving, I have not maintained a style from a particular tribe. And since I descend from so many different kinds of tribal groups, I really don't focus on one particular style. Uh, what I do is I experiment. I'm the kind of person that when you give me a task, I jump right in and I go full blow on it. So this is, this is one of those things where I've gone full blow on it. When I first started, I joined a group called the Columbia um, River uh, Basin Basketry Guild. They have their uh, main meetings over in Multnomah Village. I started going to classes there, and this particular skill is the first thing I learned at that class. And uh, it's easy. I've taught it to Portland Public Schools. I've taught it to adults, taught it to children, uh, third graders. So it's one of those that's pretty easy to use it to, to, um, to make something out of. Um, it's also pretty easy for those who have never woven before and who don't have the ability or the uh, um, drive to go out and gather natural materials. These things you could buy in Michaels. You don't have to go out and walk for miles and you know, peel and split and all that sort of stuff. You just buy it at Michaels and, and that's how easy it is to get ready for this. So um, I kind of want to make sure and mention there's different kinds of styles of weaving that people do. This is called coiled, coiled, C-O-I-L-E-D, coiled. And coiled baskets are kind of like the huckleberry baskets that the uh, plateau people made. And a lot of people do make coiled baskets. There's a lot of coiled baskets in the Southwest. And it's a matter of weaving a coil and stitching the coil. There's other kinds that's called plated woven baskets and plated are where you interlock the uh, materials together, you know, you know, plating a, a layer upon layer kind of a format. That's called plated. And then there's called twined baskets and twined baskets are where you tear, take a spoke and then you weave the spokes together by twining them together. Those are a lot more difficult to do. They're, um, they're more labor intensive for the uh, twined in this and the uh, um, plated baskets are really good for natural materials. This I don't think you could really do as a twining uh, project. Maybe you could. You could probably do it as a, as a um, small little basket. What we're going to be coiling, okay? To the second part of teaching this class, and let's first talk about the materials. This is called paper twist. 
And paper twist comes in coils like this. You can go online and just Google paper twist. And it'll be sent to you. It's really pretty cheap. I have a big roll of this that was like $35 or a big roll of it. You go into Michael's store and you can buy it. They ask you for paper twist. And it comes in different colors. The colors don't really matter because um, you're going to cover over that color anyway. But the, the point is it's paper twist. Uh, it's, it's not a material that's really expensive. And the point is, is it's twisted together. So you get paper twist out of Michael's. The other thing that's critical that you've got to have, well, one, you're going to also need scissors. A good pair of scissors, you've got to have that to be able to cut your threads. But you're going to be threading some yarn through the needles. And you want to get what's called a cool needle. C-R-E-W-E-L. Cool needle. And the reason it's called a cool needle is because of the, the eye of the eye of the needle. The eye of the needle is extremely large. Maybe you can see how large that needle eye is. You want to have a really large eye for your needle because you don't want to struggle when you're trying to thread your needle with the yarn that you're going to be using. So when we get to that point, make sure and remember you have to have a cruel needle with a really huge eye. It does not matter if the end of the needle is sharp or it's blunt. This one is a blunt point. It doesn't really matter which, which is sharp or blunt. Um, if you have some young children, you might want to get a blunt in needle because that way they won't poke themselves when they're trying to do this again. But it's a very important that you have a good needle. And the kind of yarn that you're going to use, it depends on, on you. But I would not use any of the acrylic yarns that come when we're making sweaters or something like that. You want to get what's called cotton yarn. And the cotton yarn that I like to use is called Peaches and Cream. And it's cotton. And the reason this cotton is so much better than the acrylic yarn is the acrylic yarn stretches. And you don't really want your yarn to stretch. You want to be able to have your yarn be, make a pretty good tight stitch when you're doing it. So peaches and cream comes in all different kinds of size, uh, colors and they're uniform in size. So again, go to Michael's, get yourself some peaches and cream, choose your colors. Um, and when you're choosing colors, and this I, was, I learned from my sister Margie, she's the master bead worker in our family and she taught me about colors. You have to have a light, you have to have a dark, and they have to contrast really well so that when you're making your design, you have a good contrast. And then you'll have your medium colors, which are like these colors. These are quite medium. They're, they don't really stand out one way or the other, but they're medium colors. But they'll go well, they'll go well with your highlight color and with your dark color. Or like this, they'll, they'll go well like this. So look at your colors, select whatever feels good to you. Um, there are also, when you go to look at the colors, there are some yarns that are just variegated. And if you want to not worry about your design and making design, just get a variegated yarn. And it will become a very beautiful piece, no matter what, just because it's a variegated yarn. So don't stretch, don't get worried about it. And you're thinking, what am I going, what am I, what's my goal? What am I trying to make here? Well, what you're going to be making here is, and you can vary this however you want to do this. You can make something pretty tiny like this. It's about maybe an inch and a half across. And you could um, put a little, oh, let's see, I thought I had one there. You could put a little, little dangly thing on it and make it be a necklace. I've seen some people just do the middle part, the very start and make it be a dangly earring. I've seen some people, uh, and I've done it myself, take, take one of these and make a big, huge basket. I made some popcorn um, baskets, or popcorn baskets, I guess, for my um, niece for her Christmas present. Well, they can be really large. And we'll talk about how you get them to be curved like that. And 
when you're looking at your designs, you kind of want to look at designs. There's a lot of really good designs from the Southwest that if you look at some of their designs, you could find some really beautiful designs from the Southwest. And that those designs, again, it's how you use your colors, how you use your accents. It's uh, where you paste or put the, put the designs. You can make strips, you can make circles, you can make diamonds. All of this is just a matter of where you want to place your yarn. It's really easy. Don't stress out about trying to make something so glorious that the gods are going to favor you forever. Don't worry about it. Your basket is just going to tell you what it wants to be, and it can be a simple little doodad, okay? Or it can be something that, oh, gee, that looks pretty cool. But then you go, well, what are you going to do with something that small? Well, I don't know. You just figure it out yourself. Let yourself be creative with how you do this. Some people, of course, have taken these kinds of little little platters and make them big. So then now it becomes a nice large platter. And what you do there is it's going to be tricky on keeping it flat so that when it sits, it's, it'll sit flat. Key, and I know you're going to stress out when we start actual weaving, the start is always the hardest part of doing, doing the basket. And there's going to be some rules on when you're doing the weaving. You always have to weave from the front to the back, front to the back, front to the back. Get that in your mind. Write it down on your little instructions. I have available some instructions that if you want to have something written in front of you, you can get these from, from me or whatever. And write your notes on your instructions. If it says you hear front to back, underline it, circle it. Because if I catch you not doing front to back, I'll pull it out. That's what it is. This young person, guess what? They didn't do front to back. They kind of did something creative on their own. And hey, you know, that's their, that's their making. And that's their art. So who am I to say that this is uh, incorrect? But I do want you to learn how to do an actual design and not do front to back and just scribble. This is a scribble, scribbles are fine, but this is not the way that I'd want you to learn from this class. This is another scribble. This is clearly another rule that you have to, have to learn how to do. You have to stitch with the color of the row below. And you go, Cece, what is the row below? Well, here, the row below is red. You see that? That's the row below. It's red. The color that they should have stitched with on this one is red. But what did they do? They used blue. They used the color that they were stitching with. And they used blue. They didn't follow the rule. Stitch with the color of the row below. And again, students, what was the other rule that you're supposed to learn? Front to back, exactly. That's the major rule. Stitch from the front to the back. Stitch from the front to the back with the color of the row below. And here, in this case, the row below was red. They should have been using red. And I'll teach you how to add two colors on there so you will have the right kind of color on your, on your needles, okay? Wrong way to do it. Correct way to do it. Okay, two different, two different uh, results, and that this one I would make that person tear it out and start over. This one is something that I feel comfortable with. Um, there are certain things that you can do and play around with. Look at this one. This one is 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 using variegated thread. Variegated thread is pretty easy. The design will come out no matter what. You don't have to worry about stitching with the color of the row below. You do have to remember front to back. But this one is, is good to, to do if all you want to do is learn how to stitch it. Get variegated thread. So here's variegated thread. Doesn't matter about the color of the row below because the color is going to be different. Stitch with the color of the row below. Now this, this has two little issues that I have that are bothersome for me. This start is too big of a hole. See how big that hole is? Now maybe if you wanted to be creative, you could say, but Cece, I really want that hole to be there because I'm going to put a bead right there and it's going to be the middle of my dangly for my necklace. And if you show me that you're going to do that, 
I'll lift to get away with the, with that big pole. And this that would work on this one because also what's happening is there's a little dangly piece here that you can hang on to your necklace. You see that little place right there? And what's happened is this paper twist has been wrapped, 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 wrapped all the way. It started wrapped here and it's ended to be wrapped over there. So it's wrapped, 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 wrapped. And so that covers up and it just becomes part of the, the rope. We're going to start here in a few minutes to do this, but I kind of want to show you a couple of things. You'll, we're going to, I'll teach you how to do the start, but the end is about the same way as you do the start and you go. Well, how do we finish this once we're getting to the point where we're done? Well, you'll be cutting and making that paper twist really narrow. So at the end, you're just going to be wrapping over a narrower piece of paper twist, okay? So it just kind of blends into the, to the work, okay? So, a couple things. Um, I try to make lids for my, my baskets. I never, ever get them to fit right. It's, my, it's the bane of my existence to get my lids. I don't, I can't get them to fit right. This started out as, a, um, as somebody's unfinished project, so I kind of finished it for them. And when you get to this stage, I'll teach you how to kind of make this bend. But what I discover is that you can also mold this a little bit. Okay, you can kind of mold it and push it around. So I'm hoping that I can mold it and push it around. But I really would have wanted to have my edge be smaller, be tighter, so that when this sits on there, the lid just sits on there. It's not the way I really want it, but it's going to work for right now for this demonstration. And again, pretty simple, two colors, contrast colors. Again, it's how you play with your art, how you want to deal with with your coloring. So, okay, part two. Okay, let's get going. So this is the part where we're gonna learn how to do this. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take that paper twist, you know, that you got from Michael's. They got lovely little paper twist that pretty cheap. And you're going to take one end of it and you're going to fan it out. You're gonna make it into a fan. What you're intending on doing with this part of it is to make that tip of that of that uh, paper twist get really skinny okay so you're going to take that fan and you're going to cut it you're going to cut that fan and you're going to have a little garbage piece the little garbage piece is this is the garbage this is the part that you're going to keep the, the um, trimmed uh, paper twist kind of looks like this okay then the next thing you're going to do with this trimmed paper paper twist is you're going to twist it back together and you'll notice when you have your paper twist that it actually does twist in a certain direction. Twist it back in that same direction because that you don't fight. You don't want to fight your paper twist. You just want to want to um, keep going with it. And so you got your paper twist, and what do you want it to have? You want to have a fat, fat head needle. And with your fat head needle, you're going to. Thread that needle, and it's got that fat head on it again. And for every color that you have, you're going to have a needle for that color. So if you have two colors in your in your work, you're going to have two pieces of thread, and each piece of thread is going to have a needle on it. Okay. So you're going to take your thread. <coughs> excuse me. And sometimes people have a hard time getting this into that, even if it's a fat one. But I tell you, and I know this is kind of gross to some people, but I put it in my mouth. Put it in your mouth, bite on it. See? Bite on it, and it gets to be a flat end because you've just bitten on it. So when it's flattened out, and it's kind of wet too from your saliva, See, it makes it so much easier to thread. Your point is flattened. It's got a little bit of saliva on it. It makes it a little bit stiffer. Thread it. Now you've got your paper twist ready to go. Now, this is where it can get really kind of confusing because what this is called the start, S-T-A-R-T. Every basket has to have a start. And every basket maker 
looks at the start of the basket. You'll take anybody who's a basket maker and they'll say, how's your start? This one, how's your start? What does it look like? How tight is it? So every basket maker takes a look at the start. This start, I'm quite proud of. I did this start myself and it's because you can see that it's very tight in the middle and it's very even. That's what you're looking for is you're looking for an even start that's pretty tight. So how do you get to that? Okay, that's what we're gonna show you. You know, you twisted that end of that paper twist, made it made a little point. Now, can you see this really easy on this table? Let me make sure that you can. Okay. You see how that yarn is sitting and it's pointing towards the end of the of the paper twist? That's what you want to do. And you want to hold it about an inch or so uh, towards towards the uh, fat end. Okay, so that's how you're going to put it there and the points that way and the yarn is that way. Now you take that yarn and you wrap it around and around and around, around and around and around. Keep going, keep going around. You can talk to yourself as you're doing this too. This is fine. Round and around and around and around. Clear to the end. And I think my yarn's too too short, but I might have to redo this. The point is, you're getting to the end, you're getting to the tip, okay? Oh, I'm going to have to get some longer thread. I'm sorry, guys. Longer thread's necessary. That thread is not going to work. Now, tell me how I did this again. How did I get this ready? Tell me. Put it in your mouth. You're right. Chew on it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Thank you, students. I'm glad you're listening. That's a good thing. I like it when students listen. Okay. Got that. We're laying it again so that the tip is there. And Rebecca, you might want to watch this carefully because this is going to be a key to your basket. Wrap it around and around. Go from that end to the pointed end. Keep wrapping, keep wrapping, keep wrapping, keep wrapping, keep wrapping. Let's go as far to the. Now, you've got it clear to the end. You're going to fold it back onto itself. You see how that's kind of like folded into itself? Now, what's your, which way do you wrap? Front to, front to back, front to the back. One, two, three. That's the key. That's the main stitch that you're going to use all the time. Front to back, three times. Now you take your yarn and you put it in the middle where you first started. That's your first stitch on your start. Front to back, first stitch, that's your start. You go back to the paper twist again. You snuggle it up against the color. One, two, three. Fold it in. And in the when you're first getting the start, you put it in the center. That's your start. Okay. How many times do I wrap? Three. Three. You're right. One, two, three. Where do I put the needle? In the, in the middle. Thank you. Good students. I think I'm going to give you an A over there, student number one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, student number one. That's student number one. He, he and I have known each other for 40 years. He's a pretty good student. Okay. How many times? Three. Three. Front to back. One, two, three. Yes. Put it in the middle. Okay, so that's your start. And you just keep doing that, doing it, doing it, doing it. Okay, you go all the way around. And, well, I think I'm going to get it to the point where 
I'm going to go just a little bit further because I kind of want to get it so that we don't have to do it in the in the middle again. So one, two, three, wrap it, center. Okay. And you see, I'm kind of manipulating it, so I'm trying to keep it flat. You don't want, see how this one had a little hump on it? The person that started this didn't keep it flat. And so it started to make it curl too early. Um, it didn't keep that. One, two, three. Try to keep your start flat. Put it in the middle. Now what I'm trying to get is pretty quickly, you're going to get to what I call the row below. One, two, three. I'm still doing it in the middle because I'm not quite into the row below yet. One, two, three. We're still in the middle because we're not quite at the row below, but we're almost there. And I guess I'm going to kind of push it a little bit and try to get you to see the row below. Okay, so there's the start right here. This is the start of this row below, the row that kind of turns into itself. So now you stitch into the row below, okay? When I do, when I make the stitch, I pull my thread to the front again because we're doing it front to back. One, two, three, well, two. okay. So stitch it to the color of the row below, okay? That's your start. And keep it flat. Um, don't put all of your stitches into the center because eventually you want the row below because you'll end up with a fat center. And you, all your long, yarn will be sitting there and go, oh, see, so I can't get my needle in there anymore. There's too much thread. Well, yeah, you, you stop stitching into the row below. So eventually, or into the middle. So eventually you kind of get a feel for it. Don't stitch in the center anymore. Do it in the row below, okay? So that's the start. Now let's do something a little bit more exciting. I like that word exciting. What color do you think I should use? Red, I've got red, yellow, black, or yellow, white, or black. What color? Yellow. This one? Yellow, okay. Yellow, okay, so let's use yellow. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add a color, okay? So you choose your color. It's cotton thread. Cotton thread is going to be great because it won't stretch on you too much. Thread your needle. Mm -hmm. Chew on it. Okay. So now we're going to add a color, okay? It's easy. Don't be scared of adding a color. It's easy. So you get me your, your yarn ready for three, three twists. All you do is you lay your color on top of the, on top of the um, paper twist. One, two, three. Stitch with the color of the row below. The row below color is red, okay? Now, that's how I knew that this person didn't do it right because they didn't stitch with the color of the row below. It's wrong. You're trying to maintain your edges of your design so that your design actually stands out as a design, okay? Stitch with the color of the row below. Bring your yarn to the front again. One, two, three. Stitch, put it pretty much right under where you came out. Okay. And yes, you see I'm getting tangles. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just life. Life can be a tangle sometimes. Okay. And I like to do at least two sets of three stitches. So now I want to add that color as my design. 
So I'm going to bring the red up and I'm going to hold the red with the paper twist. And now I'm going to wrap with the color that I'm adding. One, two, three. What color do I stitch with? The red or the yellow? Red. Red, exactly. Color of the row below. Okay. There you go. So now you've got yourself the start of a design. One, two, three. And here's where you start being creative. You can do four square, do four square so that your design kind of starts there. Then you can do a triangle. You can do alternate colors right there. Uh, you can do a long red, then some more yellow. Now, now it's where you start your design. So students, how do you want me to make my next stitch? Should I use the same color red or should I go yellow? Should I do long yellow, long red? What should I do? What should I do, student? Long yellow. Twice long, as long as the first one. Long yellow, twice as long as the first one. Alrighty, that's what we'll do. Okay. One, two, three. Stitch with the color of the row below. We bring it to the front. Stitch with the color of the row below. Twice as long as the first yellow, so that means we go a, a second time with three wraps. One, two, three. Stitch with the color of the row below. And at this point is where I would hand it off to a student and ask the student to keep going, okay? So, student, and I'm going to ask Rebecca as the student to come in and uh, practice, okay? So I'm going to step out of the frame for right now and have you come in and you practice and I'll stand to the side and watch, okay? Front to back, ready? Yeah, ready, front to back. Mm -hmm. And then one, two, three, three times. Just like that. Uh -huh. One. Three. And then stitch front to back. Yeah. Stitch through mm -hmm. the row below. Yeah. I can't wait to make things for my home and presents for my friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And try to keep it real good and tight, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I did the one, two, three. Now I do the color? You do whatever you want to do. Did you, when you wrap that <laughs> red, yeah. was the color yellow on, on uh, in the on laying on top of the um, paper twist. This is a... Okay. Uh, okay I'm have I moved it around? <laughs> I'm going to come towards you. Okay. No, it wasn't. Oh, yeah. see, uh, that's what I did. No, so no, I got no, no, That's fine. That's a good no. learning lesson. If you can show that what she did is when she I forgot to she, do this. She, she forgot to hold the yellow. Hold that and wrap around. around. Oh, I knew it. No, no, that's fine. So just use that as you're learning this. Now, now put the next <laughs> yellow. Do your next stitch with the yellow where it's supposed to be. Okay. And now wrap it, wrap the red. And wrap the red. It's the yellow one in there. Okay. 
that's how we learn. We learn by doing a little mistake like that, the next time you think, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake because I just learned. Okay, that's right. <laughs> and let me make it tight so that... Okay, now... Bring it to the front, bring your yarn to the front, and stitch. Take the wrap three times. Okay. And stitch front to back. Mm -hmm. Good one for getting things tangled. It'll, it'll get to the eventually the way she Yeah. Really I nice. see. So I'll untangle it. Now we go. And now I pull the red. Yeah. Okay. Now. And if you're going to, whichever color you, you're not going to use in your design, it has to ride with the paper twist. Okay. So then I'll do yellow now. Okay. So I'll put the red on top. Mm -hmm. And this one. Yeah, three over. times. Yeah. Red. Okay. Three. I guess you get used to how to hold it yeah, yeah, you as you go along yeah, you so do. that they're less likely to twang. Exactly. So I've wrapped three times and now I stitch now front to back? You stitch front to back, yeah. Okay. The row below. Mm -hmm. With the color of the row below. Ah, with the color of the row below. Yes. Because <laughs> the row below is not yellow. Thank <laughs> uh, you back. To back. Yes. Those are the notes you'd write on your piece of paper. Yes. This is the color of the row below. Okay. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Okay, fun. It is not hard. Let's see. It's not hard. It's just a matter of getting used to holding it and just following the instructions. Mm -hmm. Now, when you run out of the red or you run out of the yellow, you just add that color on top of the paper twist and you wrap it around and you ought to do that you ought to do the second color. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, no, it's easy. And then when you come around to the end and you finish with your project, then you do that same open the paper fan uh -huh. and make the point. Cut the fan like we did in the beginning so that you end up with a point there. Okay. Okay. okay, great. Now, um, one last thing I want to say. If you start a project and you want to make a big project, mm -hmm. just don't cut your paper shorts. Just stay with the color that you have and just take from the color because you don't know how big your project's going to be. So mm -hmm. just go for the color, don't cut your paper twist, um, and just use it from the color. Okay. Otherwise, for practice, small pieces, just to get, yeah. yeah. It seems like it would be easier to do small projects until I get used to how my hands should work. Yes. 
and then attempt something big. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to make a big platter. <laughs> it's going to be gorgeous. Do you have any questions about... See this little, little guy's coming to the end, pretty, pretty close to the end? You um, take the end, just like we did in the beginning. You take the end, you open it up, make your little fan, like we did in the beginning. So shall we do in the end. Make your little fan. Trim the fan with your handy dandy scissors. Uh, and it doesn't matter which way you trim, it just you know, doesn't matter at all. The main thing is you're trying to get to the point. See? Get to the point. And then you just continue to stitch, wrap around, wrap around. So you get to the very end and at the end stitch two or three times and you're done. It's just pretty easy. And it kind of ends up looking like this so that you have a, a little ledge, little drop off, but it's a slanted little drop off. Okay. Can you see that well? That might help a little bit better. Okay. Alrighty. That's pretty much it. Thank you everybody for coming and joining us. We appreciate that you're willing to learn this. Thank you, teacher, and thank you, students. Uh, we appreciate that you're willing to learn this. And uh, if you need anything from us, just let the folks know that put this together. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. She shines gold, give me one. Oh, honey, girl, or I name, he and I name, no. If she shines gold, give me one. Oh, honey, girl, or I name, he and I name, no. She shine so, give me what? Oh, honey, girl, or I name, she and I name, no. We she shine so, give me what? Oh, honey, girl, or I name, oh, honey, girl, or I name, oh, honey, girl, or I name, she and I name.